Hello grade 12. Today we go to the lab to confirm the value of g, acceleration due to gravity. Objects are pulled to the earth by a gravitational force called the object's weight. An object is in free fall when its weight is the only significant vertical force acting on it. An object in free fall might be moving upward or downwards. For example, the ball is in free fall from the moment it leaves my hand until I catch it. For all this time, the ball's weight makes the ball accelerate downward at 9,8 meters per second squared downwards. This is the acceleration due to gravity. It's also called g. Let's confirm that g really is 9,8 meters per second squared. For simplicity, we will use only the downward motion of the ball. To do this, we use a motion detector. A motion detector measures the velocity of an object moving past it. Let's join Siwe as she explains how we can measure the value of g in the lab. Let's do an experiment to prove that an object will fall at 9,8 meters per second squared. Legend is going to drop a small ball below a motion detector. While the ball is falling, the motion detector will record the velocity of the ball. Legend placed a meter ruler along this stand here. This is so that we can calculate the acceleration of the ball over a specific distance. We'll be using this distance marked here, which is half a meter. He'll drop the ball from several different heights above the marked part. Can you think? why he has to do this. Did you remember that we always need to repeat an experiment several times to check the accuracy and reliability of our results? Do you have a pen, paper, and calculator? Then let's begin. First, we need to draw a table to record all our results. I'd like to check something here. What information do we need to put into the table? We have to record the first and last velocities as measured by the motion detector and the distance. Don't forget to include the units. We also include a column for the value of acceleration that we will calculate at the end of the experiment. That's great help. Thanks. Are we ready to begin the investigation now? Yes. Watch as he drops the ball. We'll call this test one. By looking at the readings, we can see that the first velocity is 3,87 meters per second, and the second has a reading of 4,98 meters per second. Remember that the distance over which we are measuring is half a meter, so we can automatically record this too. Before we move on to the second test, let's calculate the acceleration of the first ball. We have the following information. The initial velocity, our first reading, has a value of 3,87 meters per second. The final velocity, the second reading, has a value of 4,98 meters per second. The distance traveled is half a meter. Note that instead of using delta x, we now use delta y to indicate displacement as the ball is moving in the y plane. So, because we have all these values, I'm using the equation vf squared equal to vi squared plus 2 times a times delta y. This will allow us to calculate acceleration. Now that we have the equation, let's substitute in what we know. We have final velocity 4,98 squared equal to initial velocity. 3,87 squared plus 2 times a times 0, 0,5. This gives us 24,80 equal to 14,98 plus 2a times 0, 0,5. We need to try to make the acceleration the subject of the formula, so we subtract 14,98 from both sides. For the right-hand side of the equation, we multiply 2a by a half and get a, the acceleration. So a equals 9,82 meters per second squared. Let's record the acceleration experienced by the ball in our table. 
This value is very close to the accepted value of acceleration due to gravity on 9,8 meters per second squared. Let's do another three tests and record the results. In test two, we can see that the first velocity reading is 3,72 meters per second, and the second velocity reading is 4,86 meters per second. Remember, the distance over which we are measuring is still half a meter. In test three, we found that the initial velocity is 3,955 meters per second, and the final velocity is 5,05 meters per second. And then in the last test, the initial velocity was 4,76 meters per second, and the final velocity was 5,69 meters per second. We've collected all the results, so we must calculate the acceleration in every test. We do this by using the same equation as for the first test. Oh, that was quick. This is interesting. I can complete the table. The acceleration for the second test was 9,78 meters per second squared. For test three, the acceleration was 9,86 meters per second squared. And for test four, it was 9,72 meters per second squared. I'm sure you've noticed something here. Can you think of possible reasons for this? Did you think of the correct answer? There is always experimental error when performing experiments. This is the reason why we repeat tests several times in order to record more accurate results. OK, now we can find the average of the acceleration calculated. To do this, we need to add all four of the accelerations together and then divide by four. We end up with an average acceleration of 9,795. When we round this off, we get 9,8 meters per second squared. This is the value that we expected, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's because we wanted to confirm this value ourselves, even though scientists before us had already measured acceleration due to gravity g as 9,8 meters per second squared downward. A final point to remember. Acceleration due to gravity is always downward, no matter whether the object is moving upward or downward. So even while this ball is moving upward, it is still accelerating downwards. I hope you find this useful. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, particularly the task video. Visit mindset at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.